Hey everybody, it is I, Super Paul Games. Welcome back to 80 Days. I really like the game menu design here because you can tell what everything is basically by looking at it. Here is our boss, or master, I believe it's boss, uh, Phileas Fogg. I believe that number there is how much he loves us, whether he likes us or not. This is how much money we've got. Well, he has. 3,955 pounds. That's how many times you can punch a person. We've only spent five pounds thus far on train tickets for the underwater train. We're on the second day. We have 80 days to circumnavigate the globe and get back to London. It is a Wednesday. So right now, our character, me, past part out, is at the World's Fair in Paris. And so I think I'm going to look at the red and purple tents of the Artificers Guild. I believe these guys are the ones with electric light. I headed towards the red and purple tents of the Artificers Guild, draped with banners emblazoned with their copper lily sigil. A steam-powered automaton orchestra played gleaming brass instruments. Oh my god. Well, wait, I can say that or I can say it was the most incredible display of machines? I don't care about the band. Well, mechanical uh, sommelier, sommelier, I don't know what that word is, I'm sorry, popped a cork from the champagne bottle and poured out bubbling over glasses for passing tourists. One of the artificers, maybe they just make robots? Had his hands deep inside a human-shaped automaton? Ew, that sounds dirty! Was explaining the guild's credo to a group of sticky-fingered children. Oh, the copy li copper lily stamp at the guild is an assurance of safety and quality. The artificer said, before pausing to gently discourage a curious toddler's ambitions of flight. Oh, we build and maintain everything from children's toys. She gestured to a nearby clockwork monkey, which was enthusiastically banging a pair of cymbals, two airship engines, and even mechanical workers. Interesting. So the Artificer's Guild makes artificial things. Um... Okay, so we're a valet, right? That's our character. We're the valet to, for Phileas Fogg. So we're going to be defensive about losing our job to the machines. A mechanical valet could never replace a human one! I called out, smoothing my hands over my lapel. The artificer gave me a tired look. Oh, it does not matter. It's not a matter of replacement. Humans and automata have different skills. An automaton, for instance, will never tire or feel hungry as thirst. It can function happily under the hot glare of the sun and will not get fussy jaw or cotton, cotton lung if it works in a factory. Oh, no. Uh, but can it feel loyalty or satisfaction in a good day's work? I asked. I'm not, I'm not scared about losing my job. An artificer, the artificer, released the child squirming in her arms and gave me a lopsided grin. Oh, perhaps one day we will build in our, our optometa to feel those emotions. There are many in the guild interested in such things. Are you talking about sex bots? She raised her voice a little to address the small crowd that had gathered to eavesdrop on our exchange. Oh, the artificer's guild operates across the borders of nation, caste, and creed. Uh, in what countries? I heckled. Someone in the audience sighed at my continuous interruptions. Oh god, I'm that dude! But the artificer seemed pleased. All of them, she replied. We have outposts in Bombay, Siberia, Bucharest, in every corner of the earth. She turned back to the children. When we become artificers, we give up our personal loyalties and swear to use our skills for our only peaceful aims. You sound like a cult, the artificer continued. The cleverest of engineers and inventors all working together to shape a better future for tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to be skeptical. You like those guys in Fallout uh, who want to help people. Oh, I can't think of them. What their name is. I remain somewhat skeptical of the rosy picture she painted. No organization was so perfect and noble. The artificer caught my sleeve as the crowd dispersed. You seem a confident sort. How was my speech? I rehearsed it all night. Was it too much? Um, it was really good. Was any of it true? I asked with a raised eyebrow. Eh, enough of it, she replied. The current council's not so bad, anyway. Some of them have good ideas. The trick will be getting them voted through the committees. I gave her a nod, and then I returned to the central square, stopping here and there to gaze at the wonders of the exposition. My feet were tiring, and the hour was growing late. Oh, man, but I love this kind of stuff. Like, if you ever go to Chicago, go to the Museum of Science and Industry. It's kind of like that with the World Fair. Uh, I returned to Monster Thog, who's eating a meal of plain boiled beef a la glaze. Uh, did you enjoy the exposition? My master inquired diffidently. 
Uh, I'm going to say yes, I did. I like this stuff, and I nodded. I'm not going to say nothing else can impress me now. Um, I don't know. I'm going to be like that. We're unspeakable lucky. Uh, we're unspeakably lucky, Monster, to live in an age of invention, I declared. It will certainly make it easier to win my wager, Monsieur Fogg replied mildly. I dreamed that night of a mechanical, the mechanical wonders and automatons with beautifully enameled faces. Oh, that's creepy. Knowing little of the strange inventions of stranger people, I would soon encounter in my journey around the world. Oh, my character's now suave. Hey, babies, you want some of Passaport out? I can take something else out. Oh, man, look at all these routes we're discovering. Left early on the day. I don't know what that means. The clock is ticking, uh, Passaport, and we must decide our next steps quickly. Well... What about the market? Now oh, that's worth a lot in Berlin. We're gonna buy an extra suitcase, and then we're gonna pack it with crap. Uh, we'll buy another suitcase. I don't know how much of this shit we can bring. Hopefully, I didn't spend too much money. All right, so we got a shaving kit, geometry equipment. I should have bought. Ooh, half of the valet set. Ooh, I can shave him. May I shave your genitals, master? If you're really a jerk, I'll cut them off. Part of the gentleman traveler set the traveling cloak. Good for keeping chills out. Um, I don't need, think we need to sell anything. All right, let us roll. Why don't we plan our route? I want to go to Venice. Can I move the map around? No, 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 I didn't mean to go to Munich! Um... No, how do I get back? That's not what I meant to do. I was trying WASD. Uh, okay, there. I want to move the camera. I want to get to Venice, but we don't know how to get to Venice. There are trains there. How do I look further? Because I know if we get to Venice, we can head down there. I don't want to go to Nice, though. I want Venice, but what is the best way? Do we go to Nice and hope we can travel across? Do we go to Munich? Munich is pretty expensive, though. You know, maybe we should do that, because Budapest or Vienna, we had stuff that would work that way. Why don't we just go straight to Vienna? Can't we? No, we gotta go straight to Munich? Alright. I think this departure can be discussed. The traveling cloak from our gentleman traveler set uh, should spur them on. A little encouragement is required? All right, so let's buy a ticket. So is that for tomorrow then? I believe I did that right. All right, so we should have a... Uh, next uh, train uh, leaves tomorrow. We'll have to stay the night. All right, so let us stay in Paris. Sorry, I'm still trying to figure the game out. Uh, we'll pass the night here. Uh, can we visit some lovely Parisian girls? We took a hotel for the night. Where did we take it? Uh, we will be comfortable here, Monsieur Fogg remarked, but traveling overnight will be often more efficient. Uh, so we must board the longest journeys available? Uh, perhaps, he replied, the short answer indicating, I think, that a one-day journeys might often be more flexible in their timing and could allow for more connections. Still, the surrounds of the Ritz Hotel were most enjoyable. Hurry up, passport. Don't drop those cases. All right, let us go to Munich. Uh, the overhead rack has space for one suitcase, but we have three. Uh, higher space in the guard's van. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have bought so many suitcases. Boarding the Orient Express was an altogether calmer affair than our race through London had been. Mechanical porters loaded us in through the windows, then snapped them shut with a delicate click. The train was extremely fast and could sweep us across the whole of Europe. Or at least as far as the uh, Deutsches Kaiserreich, where the track currently ceased. Uh, last, a long, wait, a long last, a uh, last long window, a whistle blew. Whistle! And we began our journey east. I don't know, maybe I made a mistake going this way. We're not going to be able to hit Vienna. I'm sorry, Venice. My master wished to be undisturbed, so as we left Par Paris... Uh, I'm going to leave him and explore the train. 
I left him and went to explore the train. There was a delightful dining car, an observation deck, 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 formed by the replacement of an entire compartment with open glass cute. Oh, that sounds cool. I'm going to do that. Look at the scenery flash past. As I stood, a portly gentleman with a quivering, luxuriant mustache struggled by carrying several trunks. I'm going to offer to help him. Because that, that's what we, our character is, right? We're just a regular valet, a nice little guy. We're a Captain Hastings type. Dr. Watson. Uh, I offered my aid, and he introduced himself after a shower of things. Henry de Blosette, foreign correspondent of the Times. I will introduce myself. My name is Passport Out, and I am, uh... Oh, wait, me and my master are going around the world. Oh, then I wish you luck, he replied. He patted his breast pocket. The stories that you hear, it seems everywhere, is on, uh... Hmm, everywhere is on the brink of one revolution or another. Everywhere there's progress, but who will count the cost? Uh... Can't be as bad as all that, I assured him. Oh! Uh, he replied with dark amusement. Perhaps the people of Belgrade would not agree with you after what happened there. Good day to you. And uh, with that, he clapped me on the shoulder and headed off in the direction of the dining car. I'm going to follow him. The master, Fogg, said to stay out of his way, so I don't want to yell at me. And I found groups of people talking, talking quietly. I'm going to join the young Parisian ladies. Hell yeah. I joined a group of young Parisian ladies who were toasting their adventure away from France. How about an adventure in my pants, ladies? <laughs> Maybe? No. They are going to Vienna to hear about a concert by the great steam orchestra there. Ooh. Interesting. Uh, they're worried that they won't be able to leave. I only hope we'll be able to leave. One confided. I'm going to play a card. Why, because of your great beauty, I inquired, and the girl blushed. Her companion frowned at me. You are a valet, monsieur, she pointed out. You do not have the standing required for such a remark. First and foremost, I'm a Frenchman. Viva la dick. You can suck it. I rejoined with a smile. The girl shook her head. And above that, a man. And she replied with a sigh. Come, Isabel. She stood in her friend reluctantly, I think, left with her. I finished my cognac. Cognac. Oh, I can never pronounce it right when I look at it. Cognac. And then returned to Monsieur Fogg, who, to my surprise, looked up from his paper at me. Um, what did you learn? I will tell him of the dining car. They have the car that you dine in. I told him of the dining car, and he looked smartly aside, clearly unimpressed. Oh, he's going to be mad I talked to somebody um, below my station. Relations with Fogg have grown slightly worse, but your character is now polished. We arrived in Munich a few hours later. Uh, the traveling cloak should be quite valuable here. Well, the market is closed at this late hour. All we can do is hit the sleeping place. We will pass the night here. Yeah? The Franco-Prussian War had concluded but a year previously. Oh, sweet, I was right last episode when I said it was... That's the war with France. Oh, shit. Wait, so you mean we're in German states, right? Uh. uh thus, my French accent was a disadvantage. During our short time in Munich, the concierge of the hotel was most suspicious when I approached the deck. The desk. His dick. Um, you know, I'm not going to be immune to a certain bitterness. If your country got attacked and you lost Alsace-Lorraine, a part of your country, because of people being att attacking you, you'd be mad. I was not immune to a certain bitterness, though I knew it to be futile. France had been defeated, and the world had turned over, turned once over since. Hmm. So I'm going to take the man to task. Not that it's his fault. So I took the man to task on it, demanded pointedly whether he saw any difficulty with my providence. He slid from my accusations like a fish from a hook. You are a valet. He said, I am concierge. We both work for your English gentleman. Hmm. Then let me tell you what my gentleman needs, I replied, sensing this weasel of a creature would be, could be bullied. Oh man, I feel like an asshole now. This is, is this what happens way back in the day when the servant class starts fighting with each other? We require a hot bath, the best food, in a peaceful environment. The man nodded. It will be done. Relations with Fogg have grown worse? Why? I just wanted his giant cushioned ass to be cushioned. Can you manage another, you can manage another case, can't you, Pat's part? Uh, I'm going to explore because I have nothing else I could do there. There we go. Well, that's what I wanted is a route to Venice. There was a little daylight in Munich. The sky was shrouded in steam and oil fumes from the tractors and hydraulic excavators in the streets. 
Uh, yeah, workers shouted to each other. Uh, workers shouted to each other over the din of construction, while the more fastidious citizens wore dark cloaks over their finery. I brushed a few specks of dirt from my collar. In horror! Oh dear! Suit in the air! They're gonna ruin my suit! Truly, technological marvels aside, this was the height of barbarism! A man's pristinely right white shirts was sacred! If only I was lucky enough to still own one. Rumor had it that this work was doing the doing of the Bavarian king. who had become obsessed with steam power. That's not bad. I mean, the industrial age is coming. The industrial revolution is upon us, right? The dawning of it and all. And was spending an exorbitant sum on imported machinery and engineering works. The kingdom of Bavaria had recently joined the German Empire. It appeared that the king suddenly had much more time on his aristocratic aristocratic hands. I'm doing such a good job mispronouncing words. Uh, power and free time are a most potent and dangerous combination. As our journey, I fear, proves. Alright, let us go to the market. The European train timetable. A magnifying glass. Oh, probably not good. Apples of interest to soldier types. Can we fit that in there? He said we could sell the traveling coat. But I want that. It's part of the Gentleman Traveler set. Can we fit this in here? Um, We've got too much stuff, though. Fuck it. Well, he, he said the traveling cloak, cloak would sell for a bunch. There we go. Uh, let us leave. I want to go to Venice. A private car departs for Venice tomorrow. Ooh, maybe we'll be able to keep all of our carts. Uh, let's see, two suitcases we can bring? 540 bucks? Alright, we're gonna spend the money. The luggage has space for two suitcases, but we have three. So we sold the wine. And let us go. The open road. This promised to be a bothersome route. In fact, you know what? I'll save this for next time. Next time we'll hit the road. Hopefully I did not spend too much money. Because I want to hit the waterway in Venice. So we can hopefully have a safe, nice Mediterranean journey. I don't want to go up through the fucking Siberian wastelands. Not that we're that far east yet. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're enjoying this. This game's a little different. Oh, my time is wasting. Shit. I'll see you all next time.